Hi guys, welcome back. This video is for the protein section in on your mega sheet. Um, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is review some of the basics that you guys learned about the macromolecules. Proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and there's no specific ratio for these. The monomers of proteins are the amino acids, and it's worth noting that there are 20 different amino acids. There's actually more, but there's going to be 20. Your textbook may have the chart that lists and identifies these. You do not have to memorize them. The type of bond that holds proteins together are called protein bonds, and proteins have many functions. They are enzymes, they are defense, they are structural, transport, storage, many, many different functions of proteins, and we went over a few key examples. We will go into proteins a little bit more into details when we talk about enzymes in Unit 3. Proteins can be what we call denatured. And that just means um, they are made non-functional. So denaturing proteins, let's fix up D, okay, means that we take a protein and we make it basically not work anymore. And there are several different ways that we can do this. Number one, we can expose the protein to a change in temperature. You see this very often and a good example are egg whites. When you cook egg whites, when you expose them to a higher temperature, the proteins denature and the clear egg white becomes solid opaque white. A second way that you can denature proteins is it changes in pH. Remember that a pH is your change or your measure of your hydrogen ion concentration. And exposing, protein, exposing proteins to either pHs that are too low or too high will render them non-functional. Another way that you can uh, denature proteins is exposing them to salt concentrations that they are not accustomed to or not functional in. We'll get into more detail about denaturing proteins, specifically denaturing enzymes when we get into unit three. But for now, I want you guys to know what denaturing means. It's to make the proteins non-functional and you can do that by exposing them to different temperatures, pH, and salt concentrations. So with all of these macromolecules, we focus on how their structure affects the function. And in order to do that for proteins, we first have to get into detail about the building blocks or the monomers, which are the amino acids. So, Amino acids are going to have a common shape to them. They have a central carbon. They're going to have a carboxyl group, that's COOH. And remember that carbon can form four bonds. They will have an amine group that contains nitrogen. They will have a hydrogen. And then this last one is the most important one. This is what we call the R group. The 20 amino acids are different based on the chain that is located right here, the R group. And that's different for the different amino acids. So some of the amino acids, tryptophan, have a specific chain attached right here, whereas proline has a different chain attached right here. You never have to memorize what the different chains are, but you do need to recognize this as the basic structure of the amino acid and that it's the R group that determines how it behaves. So the structure of the amino acid, specifically that R group, affects how it's going to behave. And the one that we are going to be most concerned with is whether or not that R group is hydrophobic or hydrophilic. Because if it's hydrophobic versus hydrophilic, it's gonna play an important role on how our protein folds up on itself and then determines ultimately how it behaves. So let's take a look first of all at how these amino acids, how these monomers can come together to form our polymer, which is the protein. So I'm gonna draw two amino acids 
there's my amine group, there's my car there's my amine group, there's my carboxyl group, there's my H, my hydrogen, and then here's my R group. And remember that R group is just a chain attached there. And depending on the amino acid, that chain can be a different length, it can have different number of carbons, different um, other elements involved, such as sulfur. So I'm gonna take my second amino acid. There's my carboxyl, there's the amine, here's my hydrogen, there's my second R group, whatever that is. And so when we want to form a bond, when we want to take these monomers and form a polymer, we can simply take water, remove water through dehydration synthesis and form a peptide bond. Many times you're going to see a chain of amino acids together referred to as a polypeptide. So, when we form these peptide bonds, the protein will begin to fold in on itself. And it's very important that this folding is done correctly so that the protein is functional. If you change the structure, if you change any of these amino acids, then you change how wh or whether or not the protein is going to function at all. So let's talk about how these proteins fold. There are four levels of protein folding, okay? And each one is very different from the other. What we call the primary level of protein folding is the order of the amino acids. And this, the order in which they line up, the order in which they form these bonds, is determined by DNA. So in ninth grade, you may remember taking a strand of DNA, converting it to mRNA, and then translating that mRNA into a protein that's what you're doing right there is that primary level of protein folding. As the protein is being built, and this is done by ribosomes, just a little fun fact. Um, as this is happening, there is a secondary, secondary fold level of folding that will begin to occur. You have a long chain of amino acids, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands long. Each one of those amino acids are held together by peptide bonds. As this protein folding is going on, the protein itself will begin to fold. And the secondary level of folding is um, when that polypeptide takes an alpha helix or a beta pleat shape. After that secondary level of folding, the tertiary level begins. And with the tertiary level of folding, what's going to happen is that long chain of polypeptides that's already undergone either an alpha helix or a beta pleat will begin to fold in on itself. to sequester, or another way of saying it, to protect the hydrophobic regions from the aqueous environment. And that's the tertiary level of folding. The protein begins to fold in on itself so that inside are the hydrophobic regions and outside are the hydrophilic regions that don't mind it being in the, that aqueous environment. The fourth and final level of protein folding is what we call globular. This is where you have multiple chains coming together to form your functional protein. So, 
Your primary level of folding is a specific amino acid sequence determined by the DNA. Your secondary level of protein folding is an alpha helix or beta pleat. Your tertiary folding, level of folding is to minimize those hydrophobic regions from uh, interacting with the environment. And then the quaternary or fourth level of protein folding is what we call globular, where you have multiple chains coming together to form your functional protein. That's it for protein uh, notes, and I'll see you guys next time.